Thanks everyone for coming. So this talk will be on uh, mechanical design for large language models. Uh, my name is Song Zhou from Google Research, and this is work uh, joint work with uh, our colleagues Paul Datin, Wahab Mirakani, uh, Renato Pezlim, and Hai Feng Shi. So Hai Feng Shi is the visiting faculty, so he's uh, in U Chicago. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Hmm? <laughs> How to? Okay. So I need to click. Um, so in this paper, the problem we consider is to have a mechanism um, for joint creation among LLM agents, where in particular we would like to have them be able to be to increase their influence to the final generated result. Okay. Um, so I will like introduce a little by little. Um, so let's first start with uh, like I mean like going over how LLMs uh, generates uh, tokens. Okay, so they generate sentence by token, uh, I mean, in a one by one sense on the tokens and the generation of one token basically happens as what I show here. Um, so there is an input sequence. So it's a, it's a sequence of tokens uh, that, that makes a partial sentence and you send that to a large language model. Okay, the model is trying to learn the conditional distributions given, given the, the <coughs> prefix. Okay, so it outputs a probability distribution of the next token to show. Okay. And then when we have the distribution of next token, we, we draw a sample of the tokens according to that distribution. So that becomes a new token to append to the end of uh, the sequence you have. And then you repeat this process again and again, and you get a full sentence. Okay. So that's how, uh, I mean, the, how we abstract uh, the, uh, the, the, the like, I mean, mechanism of an LLM. Okay. So on top of that, so what's the uh, what's, uh, decelerator of our uh, case, right? We want a uh, mechanism. So there are several differences um, compared to traditional mechanical design in that, so first of all, the, the preference are not given explicitly, right? In, in standard mechanical design, like usually we, we assume that each agent has a valuation function and that's given or they report. But here, uh, the preferences are given in, uh, implicitly as, as LLM. So each, each agent have one LLM working for them represents their preference. It's not uh, an explicit, uh, explicit like valuation function, right? And also we need the randomization in the decoding step, right? So the outcome of the mechanism should not be a single token. It needs to be a distribution. So we can use sample decoding. And I think which we know from, from the uh, LLM work that uh, randomized decoding performs better than uh, deterministic ones in general. And also we want the whole thing to be technically aligned with a uh, general technologies of LLM, so it can be in easily integrated with the system. And also we want to keep efficiency of this whole design. We don't want to have too many calls to the LLM models, which can be costly. Right? And lastly, the, the most important thing that why we're not dedicating everything just to, to an LLM is that we want to make sure each of the agents, they are able to beat, to increase their influence to the uh, final output. So if they are willing to pay more money to, to bid higher, uh, they should see the final generated results getting closer to what they want, to getting to closer to what their uh, M suggests. So with this in mind, our proposal is to this token, uh, token auction model. So we have the input and output being the same with the standard uh, decoding abstraction of the LLM. Basically you have a shared, uh, so the input seconds will be shared and then the output will be, be a distribution, so you can sample next token from, and the, what happens for this uh, token, auction, uh, token auction model is, is in the between, right? So now instead of one LLM, we have like multiple LLMs for each of the agents. So, I mean, like each agent will have one LLM. Their LLM reads input and output a distribution, we call it PI for the I's agent. And then we will have like N of such distributions together with their bit. Okay, so B1 until Bn will be set by the uh, agents, or you can call them players in this game. And our like uh, auction will need to do this blue text part. Basically, they need to aggregate, take those uh, N distributions and N bits as input, and then output one distribution. So they, they think and continue work uh, as if one LLM. And also at the same time, they need to determine the payment rule for each of the agents. So how much 
uh, they should pay to guarantee the incentive properties of the whole mechanism. All right, so here is one, um, I mean, uh, example of, of potential application. So it's like, I mean, we can generate ads uh, with uh, competition. So here we, we show like three examples, but those are not from our mechanism. It's just from a standard uh, LLM. So you can write ads for a resort, you can write an ad for, for, for airlines, and it also can, uh, I mean, a general LLM can write an ad for both of them, right? But the challenge is that how can the LLM, let's say if the airline says we're willing to pay more money, how can you tell LLM to increase the importance or focus or whatever for airlines in the general uh, in the in, in a joint generation? Right. So that's a problem we want to address. Basically, with our token auction design, uh, the bid becomes a parameter to the generation process, and we can ensure that advertisers can bid to compete uh, for the ads in the final uh, common generation. Okay, so to to make this thing more theoretical, we need a preference model. Uh, there are multiple choices. So in this paper, we'll consider uh, three different type of um, preference models from more abstract ones to, to more concrete ones. Um, so the shared thing that we now need the preference is over distributions. So remember the outcome of the, of the uh, mechanism uh, is the distribution of the next token to sample. Right? And there are three models we consider. The most abstract one is the partial preference order. So basically, it assumes that the designer only knows, only has some partial knowledge about uh, the preference of the of the agents. Uh, it only has a like partial order of the distributions that they know, the mechanism know that is consistent among this uh, among its agents. And then we require the designer to design mechanism that is uh, incentive compatible. Basically, uh, we can roughly say like, what if one pays more money? Uh, one should be able to get like a better outcome, right? That's uh, so with this like I mean pretty weak knowledge assumption for the user, uh, for the mechanic designer, we are actually requiring a more robust uh, notion of the incentive compatibility. Okay, so moving one step further, if we add more knowledge, uh, we we'll like specify a, a a particular partial preference order, which we call call it obvious preference order. We we'll get the second model. So here we, we we need to replace the name to not confuse with the obvious strategy proof notion. Here it's different from that one. So basically means that a distribution is preferred than another one if it is closer to uh, the target distribution on each entry. Okay, for for a particular agent. Uh, so entry wise closer and also front end direction. Um, and the last one is a more concrete one. So we assume some specific form of the uh, utility function. So that gets more closer to a standard mechanical design world. And those particular utility forms are, I mean, constructed based on the um, the knowledge of the loss, training loss functions uh, in certain like training phases of LLMs. Uh, okay. So summary of the results for each of the preference model we consider. For the first general partial order, partial preference order, uh, we, we show that mechanism that has payment monotonicity and also consistent aggregation is strategically equivalent to a mechanism with monotone uh, aggregation. So here, the notions like I, I briefly described here, so payment monotonicity means like you pay more money, you get better outcome, even only you. Consistent aggregation means that if you think be five dollars is better than bidding four dollars, uh, in some cases. So for some bidding profile from others, then it should always be the case. I mean, uh, and also the, the last one, the monotone aggregation means that if you bid higher, you get better thing. Okay, that's a a pretty common conclusion for many of the mechanical design uh, literature work. Okay, the results for obvious preference order. Uh, basically, when we have this specific uh, structure, we are able to to um, generalize the, the second price payment rule to this world. Basically, it's an it's an uh, it's an implementation of notion of minimum bid to win. So basically, there uh, there will be a uh, threshold bid. So if one bid above the threshold, you get a token that you like more, and if you bid below the threshold, you you get a token that like less favored for you. Uh, the threshold is defined for for uh, each fixed random source. So random source, you can think of the random state being used in, in your program. And then 
we can construct the uh, threshold-based sampling scheme, which we call uh, stable sampling, to implement any given uh, aggregated distribution. So basically, we can implement the outcome uh, in this way. And, and with that, we can naturally define the second price uh, rule. Okay, and then with concrete uh, utility functions, so here we assume this, uh, the welfare to have this form, like basically summation over B times some closeness between your target distribution and the final generated distribution, and some over that become the welfare. And then with the welfare, if we assume everyone has cost linear utility, we can directly apply VCG. And what type of formulations of rules should be? We consider two training laws. One is for the one is KOR divergence, which is used in the pre-training and the fine tuning for LLMs, and another one is uh, inspired by the PPO algorithm objective in the in the RLHF stage of uh, of the training. Okay, and then for this particular two uh, forms, we have shown that the optimal aggregation function to be either uh, linear aggregation for the first version and uh, log linear aggregation for the second one. So those are simple functions, in, uh, actually. Okay, so demonstrations. So we use one of Google Bard model to demonstrate some examples. Right? So in the end, when we when we do the demonstration, we, we don't really like uh, use different models. We use the same model plus different prompt to simulate two different LLM models. The prompt given uh, given to the LLMs can be seen here. So the blue part are the same. Uh, the difference is for in, in the red part. So for the first agent, we say, okay, write a one sentence add for a fly to Hawaii using R5 lines. And for the for the second agent, we say, okay, write one, a one sentence add for a vacation in Hawaii at the better resort. And the generated results is like we put in a table. I think I don't have time to go over that de uh, in detail. Uh, but basically, as one increase bid, you can see like uh, basically the second player increases bid from top to bottom. You can see better resource shows more than R5 lines. And sometimes they show together in between. Right? And there are also examples for uh, competing ads. Basically, we replace R5 lines with Gamma Hotel. Uh, and we see like, um, similar phenomena, but except that Gamma Hotel and Beta Resort, that doesn't show up together. So this is a very nice uh, suggestion from one of our reviewers, and we thank the reviewer on that. Um, and magically, AMs are able to handle this uh, competition case. Okay, so I think I'm out of time, so I just stop here and thanks everyone.